Yes, 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 yes. I'll never know how much it costs. Hey, man, God bless you today. God bless you. Hey, man, we're going to come online and we're going to do Redemption Part 13 on Facebook instead of YouTube Live. And then we'll transcribe it and then we'll send it to YouTube after we do Redemption Part 13. 13 now from the perspective of Facebook. God bless you for tuning in today with Bishop Robert Johnson. I'm excited because the Bible declares in the book of Acts is in him that we move and have our being. And I'm excited to be on today to bring you redemption part 13. And as with part 12, we're going to deal with the perspective of Christology or Christology. Amen. So you can better understand God's plan of redemption and how it meets, God bless you, um, all those who are tuning in, God bless you. We want you to understand from a Christology perspective how the plan of redemption involves Jesus Christ from the beginning to the end. So today, we'll only be on for about 5 to 10, about 10 to 15 minutes. And we want to say thank you for all, all those who are tuning in. And we want to give a shout out to the veterans on this Memorial Day. And we want to thank God for all those who serve this country. We salute you in Jesus' name. All right. So we thank God for those who will tune in and those who, who will see this video later. But we ask you to follow along with us because we have great information that's a part of our series teaching on redemption. Um, after you view it here, if you want to go and look at um, the other series um, where this is number 13, you can go to YouTube. And subscribe to Real Talk Broadcast Network. Go to YouTube and subscribe to Real Talk Broadcast Network. We thank God for you. Um, Heavenly Father, we thank God for this hour and this time that we can come to your people and give them what thus said the Lord. A word that clears understanding and gives us to know your will in regards to man. Humanity is in need of you, God. For like never before, we are thirsty for your word, and God, we can't make it without you. For it's in you that we live, breathe, move, and have our being. God, you said in your word that you would never leave us nor forsake us, and that you would be in us into the with us until the end of the world. And God, we just thank you for all that you're doing and all that you're going to do. Whereby we say thank you, Jesus, for all good and bad. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. So please, if you have your Bibles or your cell phones or your tablet, go with us as we embark upon Redemption Part 13. Don't forget, you can go to YouTube and subscribe so you'll get every video and every teaching so you can be a part of what's going on. Make sure you go to YouTube and subscribe. The, subscrip the subscription, Real Talk broadcast network all you do is just type that in the youtube search bar real talk broadcast network god bless you this video will be on later for those who will view it and we thank god for you all right so let's get into god's word we're going to go off the screen we're going to bring up the slide but we thank god for you please follow along with us in jesus name be blessed so the first scripture we want to deal with today will come from the gospel according to saint john chapter 5 and verse 36. I want to start with chapter 5 and verse 36. It says, but I have great, greater witness than that of John. Jesus is talking here because John the Baptist, the Bible says in the Old Testament, is the voice heard crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Amen. So at all times, we must understand that John deals with the deity of Jesus his humanity and his godness in one. Amen. So John lets us know that he is the God man. Amen. John also lets us know that without God and Jesus, with singular understanding, because they are the same substance, the word of God then is valid based on Old Testament writings that support what Jesus is doing. So then, but I have greater witness than that of John. 
for the works which the Father hath sent me to finish, the same works that I do, bear witness of me that the Father sent me. We need to understand in redemption, the purpose of God sending Jesus was to redeem you and I back to God. Amen. When Adam transgressed in the garden, he broke the covenant between humanity and heaven. Amen. So what God does, he sends his son Jesus to become the blood offering for the world. Amen. Isaiah 53 and 10 declares, for it pleased the father to bruise him. The Bible says, for the joy that was set before him, him being Jesus, he endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat back down at the right hand of the Father. Jesus, the physical man, was the blood offering for humanity for us to get back to God. In Revelations first chapter 22 and verses 3, God said that on the throne is God. And on his right hand side, it does not clarify or give a name, which would mean another person. Amen. But he says, the Bible said it is the Lamb of God, representing the purpose of God, the word of God. And the same John 1 and 1 sent forth into the world to redeem you and I back to God. But the greatest part of Revelation 22 is it says his servants are are by and around the throne. You and I are the servants of God according to his spirit. Amen. But it says the father has sent me to bear witness. So Jesus Christ comes to bear witness that God is redeeming us back to himself through the blood of the man, Jesus. Let's go to verse 37. Verse 37 says, and the father himself which sent me have bore witness of me. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. Ah, he said, but the Father himself have sent me, and he have borne witness, bore witness of me. Well, what does this mean? You have to understand that everywhere it was written in the word of God, it is prophetic in regards to the man Jesus. So then when God speaks and it is revealed, that is the witness. That's what the Bible declares out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. So if we go back to the beginning of the Bible, the book of origin in Genesis, it says, let us make man in our image. A lot of people today want to denote there are there, there are more than one God or there, the first, the second, and the third person of the Godhead. But if you read right here what John says uh, within his text, he said, the father bore witness of himself. In other words, when he spoke his word before the foundation of the world, each time it comes to pass, it brings about the validity or the confirmation of what was spoken. I'll give you an example. For example, in Isaiah 9 and 6, for unto us for unto us a child is born and a son is given. I'm going to paraphrase. But if you go to Matthew 1 and 21, we see the confirmation when the angel says, she shall bring forth a child or a son and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sin. God can only bear witness of himself. No one else can except Jesus because he was the incarnated word of God in human flesh. Amen. So it says here, no one has seen his face or his shape at any time. Amen. When Moses went up to, into the mountain, the Bible said that Moses only saw the hinder or the back part of God because no man can look at God at any time and live. So Jesus Christ is the expressed image of God that walked here on earth to redeem you and I back to God. Let's go to verse 39. I'm going to jump, skip ahead we're gonna to go to verse 39 search the scripture for in them ye think ye have eternal life watch this and they are they which testify of me so Jesus is talking to the religious leaders and on one occasion remember when they brought the woman caught in adultery and they talked to tried to talk to him about adultery and divorce and those particular things and Jesus in other words let them know God bless you let them know that listen everywhere you read it in the Bible it's about me that's why he says revelations 1 and 8 I'm Alpha Omega the beginning and the end you can't read God's word and not find the inclusiveness of Jesus 
Everywhere you read in the Bible, the reflection denotes the character of Christ, which came to redeem you and I. Back to God. Listen to what he tells those religious leaders. You search the scripture, for in them you think you have eternal life. Listen, people think because they can get up and give a prophetic word and speak that there's eternal life. But Jesus said, if you exclude me in any of the Bible notation, then you don't really know who I am because the Bible is sent forth to testify of me. Consider this. That's why in hallelujah, Hebrews 10, 7, Jesus says this, then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book, and it is written to me to do thy will, O God. The book, the Bible from Genesis to Revelation has one understanding. It is the purpose and the will of God through the man Jesus to redeem you and I back to himself. Jesus was only an offering as a man sent forth to get you and I or put us back into position to where we can serve God as Adam was supposed to do. And man, Adam was to till the garden. God gave him dominion over the earth. But as servants of God in the new Jerusalem, in the new garden of Eden, you and I will worship God all day long, all the time. There is no time we will forever be in his presence for his faith so like the city you must understand God wants us the Bible says that's why he gives us a precursor to understanding in the synoptic gospels when he talks to the woman he said your fathers did worship me in the mountains but they that worship me now must worship me in the spirit and in truth child of God you must understand as long as we are in this decaying body amen we cannot get close to God through his spirit. Amen. But yet we have his spirit in us. But the purpose of his spirit is so when he comes, he can identify those who have been born again, those who are of the remnant, who he have called by his own name. And what God is doing, he's restoring the kingdom back to himself. That's why he said in this world, think that I think not that I come to bring peace, but he came to tear Satan's kingdom down. He did not come to bring peace. Peace. He came to tear Satan's kingdom down so you and I can live with him in harmony through the spirit and not in the flesh. That's why he says in his word, child of God, it do not yet appear what we shall be. But when we know he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. That's found in 1 John or 3 John. He says this, this corruptible flesh is going to put on immortal, incorruptible. This mortality is going to put on immortality. God wants to put us back in the position to where we have complete harmony through his name, through his son, with him hallelujah so then John shows us the aspect of Christology in that Jesus is God's word he is the fulfillment of God and he was incarnated to put you and I back into position with God that's why the Bible says in the book of Revelations the fifth chapter it says the seven spirits of God verse 6 were sent forth into the world and it was sent for the seven spirits of God. Everything that was in the man Jesus came from God. That's what the Bible said. He is the fullness of the Godhead bodily. He is the firstborn of the dead. Amen. He is the head of the church. Why? For he is he was the Son of God, wrapped in flesh, yet God's word to redeem you and I. First John. I mean, John 1 and 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. So you see that God had already had in his mind the Word being the Lamb, being the purpose of redemption. God's Word can manifest itself in whatever he wanted to, to do to redeem you and I back to himself. Man, we thank God for you today tuning in. Remember, it's not about me. It's not about my title. It's not about how eloquent I can speak. It's not about how good I can talk. It's about the gospel of Jesus Christ because he came into this world to die for sinners. At one point, his disciples found him talking among the publicans and they wanted him to leave. But Jesus says, the whole or the well need not physician. I come to seek that which was lost. And when Jesus Christ came, to restore you and I back to God because we are the creator's creation and he loves us. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and all he wants you to do is believe in him. 
There is a great example in the Bible of God's love between Hosea, who married Gomar, the prostitute, and yet she is a type of the world. She is a type of sin. But God says, Hosea, I want you to illustrate the, my love towards the world. Take her as your bride. Yes, she has other children. Yes, she has other lovers. Yes, he's been married before. But take her to show her that I can redeem. Show the world I can redeem anybody. No matter who you are. No matter where you come from. No matter what you've done. No matter where you went. God says, I love you. Hosea had to go back and buy her off the block. As much as he loved her each time, she turned from him and left him. But God says, Hosea, go back and get her and buy her for 35 pieces of silver off the block. It was not that Judas betrayed Jesus. It was that God allowed Judas to take the silver and turn him over into the hands of the Romans to redeem you and I. Consider nowhere in the synoptic gospels does it say that Jesus Christ, when he was crucified, there were nails in his hands. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John does not say that. If it did, that would have meant that the Romans were responsible for his death. But in the first division, in the 22nd book of Psalms, within that doxology, it says, David speaks for his son, Jesus Christ, according to the will of the flesh, the son of God, according to the will of the spirit. They say during the crucifixion that they nailed my hands to the cross. God said that way before Jesus was born. Why? Because he had to let the world know how, who, what, where, when this would take place. Meaning that man had nothing to do with it. It was God's sovereign will, power, and authority. Because at any time, Jesus would have held his hand towards heaven. Heaven would have had to respond. So God allowed him, them, to nail his hands so he could move, showing complete submission to a sovereign God. As a man, he yielded up the ghost and said, Father, into thy hands do I commend my spirit. My question to you today, have you made that declaration? Father, into thy hands do I commend my, your, my spirit. If you have not done that, if you have not done that, I charge you to make God your Lord. He's everybody's Savior, but he's not everyone's Lord. Be blessed. We love you today. In Jesus' name, God bless you.